should be quite an experience for these Northeastern kids as they're taking on the Boston Red Sox. Part of that group is outfielder Mike Sirota. Mike, great to see you. Thanks for joining us. How exciting is this playing a big league club this afternoon? Yeah, it's awesome. I mean, a lot of the guys on the team are Red Sox fans, so they grow up watching, and it's just an awesome experience for everyone. This is every year, though, right? So this is not new to you. Yeah, this is my second time doing it. So it's it's been a thing for a while now. Hey, can you take me back to uh, I'm always interested in, in the decision making with a high school kid opting to go to school or maybe going pro. You were drafted uh, your senior year out of high school and, and by the Dodgers, I believe. Yeah. And you decided to say, OK, let's uh, forego that. Let's hit Northeastern. Can you take me back through the uh, family's thought process and conversation back then? Yeah, so I think the main conversation for me and my family was just if we wanted to bet on myself or not. And I think it was really a no-brainer for me. I mean, growing up, I've always bet on myself. So I think it was the proper decision. And um, it was something that me and my parents discussed a lot. And that's the conclusion we came to. Well, certainly, I mean, it's a good decision. I think so far, your pipeline's number 11 draft prospect, even as Bill mentioned, being drafted by the Dodgers in that 16th round. If you were self-scouting your game, Mike, what would you say to someone? Um, I think I'm a, I'm a player that makes a lot of adjustments. I think I'm very willing to make adjustments at bat to at bat in the outfield, just everywhere on the diamond. Um, I think that's one of the things that makes me a good player. Did, did you come up with this, uh, this phrase? I love um, this. See, my young school or my old school father would tell me and my brother, Jay, see the ball, hit the ball, son. Um, you come up with this adapt or die in the batter's box. I think that means you're a pretty intense uh, baseball player, if I'm not wrong. Take me through that. Yeah, so that's something Coach Glavin talks about a lot. Um, he basically says if you're not adapting, you're dying. And if you're not adapting, other, other players are catching up to you. They're getting better. They're figuring out their approach um, quicker than you are. And I think um, figuring out how good you are as a player is completely dependent on your approach and, and how willing you are to adapt and, and see what works best for you as an individual. Take me further into that relationship with Mike. We had him on last year talking about your program. Um, what's that day-to-day -day interaction with, 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 with Mike? Yeah, so we're a very close team. Coach Glavin does an awesome job at communicating with the players. I mean, anything you need, he's there for you. Um, he's always open to talk in his office uh, basically every day. So you can go in, and in there if you have an issue you want to talk to him about, he's available. Um, and he's figuring out things just as we are. So he's always adapting to. Has he ever brought his brother, Hall of Famer Tom Glavin, by to speak to you guys? We haven't met Tom yet. Uh, hopefully we do soon, though. I hope it happens at some point. Um, also reading about your background, this really stood out as well. You're the great nephew of the Hall of Famer Whitey Ford. You grew up playing wiffle ball with Whitey in the backyard. Tell us about that experience. Yeah, so uh, funny story about that. He actually told me to keep the lacrosse stick out of my hand because his, his whole side of the family, they all play lacrosse. So he, he basically begged my mom for me to keep the baseball bat in my hand. What, what time's game time today? I think it's 1 o'clock, if I'm not mistaken. And, you know, without giving them the advanced scouting report, this adapter die thing in the batter's <laughs> box, you know, are, are you of the mentality, I'm going to get them before they get me today? Yeah, I mean, I'm going in there just as any other game, um, facing them in the box, just like any other pitcher, just going in there and doing my thing, and hopefully it all works out. Uh, Mike, as a New York native, from a baseball perspective, how did you find it growing up in the Northeast? Obviously, you have the advantages in California and Texas. What was it like in New York trying to be a baseball player? Honestly, I think it was beneficial for me uh, growing up in the Northeast just because I was playing multiple sports sports um, and I think playing multiple sports uh, helped me out in the long run with baseball so I think it was honestly an advantage for me. All right last thing, we want to show you some Northeastern alumni here including our very own Carlos Pena. Placata. So you want to make him <laughs> proud. Adam Adovino as well. Aaron Savali. So um, you obviously have a great school as far as baseball players and guys who made an impact in the majors. Yeah awesome stuff. Well, Mike, really appreciate the time today, man. Go out there and make uh, Pena and Adovino and Savali proud, and good luck today. 